to buy the late bitterly cold snowy New Year's Eve. A poor little girl was wandering in the dark cold streets and she was bareheaded and barefooted. She certainly had had a slippery song when she left home, but they were not much good, for they were so huge. They had lastly been worn by her mother, and they fell off the poor little girl's feet when she was running across the street to avoid the two carriages that were rolling rapidly by. One of the shoes couldn't be found at all, and the other was picked up by a boy who ran off with it saying that it would do for a cradle when he had a children of his own. So the poor little girl had to walk her little bare feet, which were wrapped in blue with cold. She carried a quantity of matches in her old apron and held a packet of them in her hand. Nobody had bought any of her during all the long day. Nobody had even given her a copper. The poor little creature was hungry and perishing with cold, and she looked a picture of misery. The snowflakes fell on her long yellow hair, which curled so brightly round her face. But she paid no attention to that. Lights were shining from every window, and there was most delicious odor roast goose in the streets, for it was New Year's Eve she couldn't forget that. She found the corner where one house projected a little beyond the next one, and here she crouched, drawing up her feet under her. But she was colder than ever. She didn't dare go home, for she hadn't sold any matches and hadn't earned a single penny. Her father would beat her, and besides, it was almost as cold at home as it was here. They only had a roof over them. The wind whistled through it, although they stuffed up the biggest cracks with racks and straw. Her little hands were almost dead with cold. Oh, one little match would do some good. Then she pulled one out of the bundle, struck it on the wall to warm her fingers. She pulled one out. Hush, how it sputtered, how it blazed. It burned with a bright, clear flame, just like a little candle when she held her hands around it. It was a very curious candle, too. The little girl fancied that she was sitting in front of the big stove with polished brass feet and handles. There was a splendid fire blazing in it and warming her so beautifully. But what happened? Just as she was stretching out her feet to warm them, the blaze went out. The stove vanished and she was left to sit in with the end of the burnt out matches in her hand. She struck a new one. It burned. It blazed up and the way the light fell up on the wall, it became transparent like gauze and she could see right through it into the room. The table was spread with snowy cloth and pretty china. A roast goose stuffed with apples and prunes steaming on it, and what was even better, the goose hopped from the dish with cutting knife sticking in its back and wobbled across the floor. It came right up to the poor child and then the match went out. And, she, and there was nothing to be seen but the thick black wall. She struck another match. This time she was sitting under a lovely Christmas tree. It was much bigger and more beautifully decorated than the one she had seen when they peeped through the glass door at the rich margin's house this very last Christmas. Thousands of lighted candles gleaming under its branches, and many colored pictures such as she had seen in the shop windows looked down at her. The little girl stretched out both her hands toward them, then out went the man. All the Christmas candles rose higher and higher, till she saw that they were the only twinkling stars. One of them fell on to make the streak of light across the sky. Someone is dying, thought the little girl, 
for her old grandmother, the only person who had ever been kind to her, used to say, When the star falls, a soul is going up to God. Now she struck another match against the wall, and this time it was her grandmother who appeared in the circle of flame. She saw her quite clearly and distinctly, looking so gentle and happy. Grandmother cried a little creature, oh do take me with you. I know you will vanish when the match goes out. You will vanish like the worms tough, the delicious goose, and the berry for first match tree. She hastily struck a whole bunch of matches because she did so long to keep her grandmother with her. The light of matches made it as bright as day. Grandmother had never before looked so big or so beautiful. She lifted a little girl up in her arms and a sword and halo of light and joy far, far above the earth, where there was no more cold, no hunger, no pain, for they were with God. In the cold morning light, the poor little girl sat in the corridor between the house with rosy cheeks and smile on her face. Dead. Frozen to death on the last night of the old year. New Year's Day broke on the little body, still sitting with the end of the burnt out matches in her hand. She must be trying to warm herself, they said. Nobody knew what beautiful visions she had seen, knowing what a halo she had entered with her grandmother upon the glories of the new year.